All right, everybody, welcome back. So that is a flareless plane, and I have a man else. And so that means, according to Kaijin, I get to collect a free kill with literally zero skill. Was that a fair engagement? I wouldn't say so. But it's just the way it is for a ton of planes of this battle rating. Gaijin has managed to ruin an entire battle rating of flareless jets purely because they are fighting all aspect missile slingers. It is getting worse and worse and worse as time goes on. Of course, it started with the A-10, but at least in the A-10's case, it is incredibly slow. It maxes out at like 700 kilometers an hour max. That's like super prop level speeds, right? So as long as you know it's there, you can at least run away from it. Then they went ahead and added the SC-25, and the SC-25 was quite a bit faster, and at the time of its release, it was 9.7, and it could actually catch a lot of stuff at the battle rating. But at least in that case, it had the R-60M, which didn't have much range. Well, then they go ahead and they add the A6, which is faster than the A10 and still has a Manels, but at least in the case of the A6, it's kind of a chunker, right? Well, now Gaijin has gone ahead and added the AMX, which is a pretty fast subsonic, right? And it's also really agile at the higher speeds while still having a Manels. See the problem here? The AMX is even more proof that Gaijin cannot figure out how to balance these subsonics, and they are going to continue to ruin this battle rating of Jet unless we do something. So please, next time this battle rating changes, yell and scream on the forum for them to go ahead and change this. In the meantime, of course, there's not much we can do, and I figure, I mean, we may as well talk about the AMX because it is a cool and pretty fun plane. There's a lot to break down here. So flight performance-wise, it's kind of a mixed bag. So it is a subsonic, of course, and it has some pretty unique flight characteristics. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure if this is the final flight model or if it was rushed out just like a lot of the other planes were this patch. But as of right now, it has very good high speed performance when it comes to turn, but terrible low speed performance. Now, it does have pretty decent acceleration as well, which lets you stay in that high air bracket most of the time. You'll see me flying around pulling 11, 12, 13 Gs. But you got to make sure to keep that speed up, because if you get slow, and I will be showing you all that later, this thing turns into an absolute brick. So long as you do stay fast, so you do have good sustained turn and plenty of nose authority, so you're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want. One thing you do have to keep in mind, though, is that, you know, just like I was saying, the flat model seems a little bit unfinished. The instructor does have a tendency to randomly decide to pull your nose around really hard at specific speeds, and you will all of a sudden pull 17 Gs and snap your wings. When you're flying this thing, you are just going to want to make sure just to always keep in mind not to pull too hard for too long. Just go ahead and periodically tap whatever key you have set to you know push your nose down like I'm doing right here. And don't get stuck into those low speed turn fights, especially against A-10s. You can see right here, I just noped out of there. I was below 500 kilometers an hour, and the A-10 is going to rinse me if I stick around for that. The good news is I actually do have pretty good acceleration, and so I'm just able to extend and get out of there while he's basically stalled himself out. Another nice advantage of this thing is the fact that you actually get 120 countermeasures. So they do fire two at once, so if you're running flares like I'm doing here, and to be honest, is what I would recommend most games, you're going to get 60 pops, which is more than enough for pretty much any engagement, and it's what allowed me to sit there just popping flares constantly just to make sure he couldn't actually get an AMNL off on me. If you're in a max up tier, and I would recommend checking before you actually spawn in, then I might bring some chaff, but even then, this is one of those planes where you're just going to want to stay on the deck playing like a little rat anyways, so you could probably get away with just hugging the deck if anyone does happen to go ahead and fire any radar missiles at you. You are in a little bit of an awkward place when it comes to fighting supersonics because unlike most of the subsonics that you're with, you can't really exploit any kind of low speed turn advantage. Like an A-10, for example, in this situation could have just pulled the F-8 into a low speed turn fight, but I would just brick up and the F-8 would almost certainly be able to pull inside me. So I'm just not going to try and force the engagement. I'll just switch targets, try and get my speed back up while I'm doing that. Especially because if you've been keeping an eye on the tickets, I am losing them incredibly fast because we have a couple A-10s here, which are very, very quickly draining my tickets. The gun actually complements the AMX's playstyle very well. It gets a 20 mil Vulcan, which has, of course, good velocity and great fire rate. Twice hitting there ratting around, you'll be able to spray some people down no problem. The only issue I have with it, at least on the AMX, is that it only gets 400 rounds of ammo, and you had to be incredibly sparing when it comes to your trigger discipline. It kind of reminds me of the F2 Sabre from back in the day, but even more so. I'll go ahead and do a small, maybe half a second burst, and then a quarter of my ammo was already gone. 
But if you are going to be playing this thing a lot, you're going to have to be very, very light on the trigger. Unfortunately, I was not this game, and so even if I had managed to kill this F8 and go after the other A10s, you know, before all my take is trained out, I still wouldn't have had enough ammo to take all of them out, you know, with, with some reasonable time. By the way, that was a perfect example of just how poor that low speed turn is, which is uncharacteristic of one of these subsonic planes. Although, of course, he was completely stalled out, so it didn't really matter in this case. It has a high rip speed of 1180 kilometers an hour as well, which I've never actually managed to hit because it just seems to have too much drag at these higher speeds to actually be able to do so. But it does let you go ahead and drop in on people like this bombing F5C, and you are going to have to use this a lot because you are still a subsonic in a supersonic meta. Even if you have any Mount Ls and plenty of flares, and even if this thing does do well in those higher speed dogfights, there are just going to be a lot of people who are just faster than you. And so you're going to have to do what you can. You're going to have to take the head-ons. Don't commit, by the way. Pull out like I did right there. But you're going to have to do whatever you can to actually be able to fight. Because if you run into something like this F4S, for example, and he just wants to run away, unfortunately, there's just really nothing you can do besides follow him back to his airfield and hope that, you know, he doesn't circle it forever. Surprise attacks in the 9L, surprise attacks by diving on people are going to be the way that you're going to be able to take out some of these supersonics. And by the way, don't underestimate the aim that L against people with flares too. You can see that F8 did actually go ahead and flare, but luckily for me, they actually went ahead and changed the rise time for missiles recently. So it goes ahead and ignores them because the flares don't heat up in time. Now, one interesting thing if you looked at the pilot in the hangar for this thing is it does actually get EEGS, which is that gun lead indicator. Now, it doesn't work with the radar gun sight, but if you bring a targeting pod and lock them up, you are able to get a lead indicator, which can help with that lack of ammunition. But me personally, to be honest, it actually hurts me more than it helps, so I really wouldn't bring it most of the time, but that is just me. Let's just say that user mileage can vary when it comes to the lead indicator. The AMX, even with the occasional wing grip, is still very fun in ARRB, and to be honest, it really shouldn't be. These are attackers, they're not fighters. They're not supposed to be competent at taking out enemy planes. It's okay if they're not the meta jet in the RRB. These missiles are self-defense missiles, at least in real life. And so Gaijin's continual decision to go ahead and make these things actually competent at killing planes, and to be honest, downright grief a lot of the flareless ones, I just cannot understand it. They need to move these things up to at least 11.0 if you ask me. Sure, they won't be great in RRB, but I mean, hey, at least they'll be balanced, and they'll still be good in tanks where they're supposed to be good in. Now, this is a perfect example of what you shouldn't do in tank RB, because when you have bombs in the wings, it rips incredibly easily, even more so than a normal air. Speaking of cast, this is one of the best 10.3 cast platforms in the game. I don't know if I'd say this or the A6 is better. Uh, I would personally prefer playing this because it does have much better flight characteristics in the A6, but that's just me. It's sure a lot better than what the Brits get at this BR, because they get the Jaguar GR1A, which only has two Gata bombs and the two dumb bombs. This can carry six, and it can also carry Sidewinders while it's doing that, and it also has a better thermal pot in the Jack at the same BR. Kind of ridiculous. Now, of course, it's not completely impervious to SAMs, especially stuff like the Tunguska, which is a sitting at 10.7. But for the most part, you're able to just orbit above the battlefield, dropping laser guided bombs on people that either can't or don't see you. Because nothing at this BR does have a radar that looks up at this angle. So, of course, as long as you can get close enough before they spot you, you should be able to deal with most people without any issues. Now, you are still subsonic, which means that you have a hard time lobbing stuff in. So if a Tunguska sees you spawn in, you are most likely going to die. But that only happened in one of my games so far, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. The AMX is just overall a great plane, both in air and ground, and I would highly recommend grinding it out no matter which mode you play. By the way, if you aren't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I am shooting for 15,000 subscribers in the near future. We'll have to see what happens, but hope you all enjoyed the video. Catch y'all next time. Peace, y'all.